Okay, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, members and guests. This is a regular Monday night meeting of the West Shore Photography Club, and it is June the 20th, 2022. Tonight we have a live image processing session for you with uh, Joe and I uh, doing the uh, processing. But before we get to that, let me talk about the uh, upcoming dates. First of all, it's midsummer, the weather is beautiful, and we want to uh, cut you a little slack here. So we have the next two weeks, we do not have meetings. Uh, next week is June the 27th, okay, summer break. And the Monday after that, of course, is July the 4th. And of course, there's no meeting that night. So our next regular meeting on Zoom will be Monday, July the 20th. It will be a competition. We don't have these very often. Let me talk about that in a sec. There is no theme and Bryson Leidick will be the judge, okay? Uh, difference between the image review and the competition. For an image review, we encourage you to submit anything that, anything, anything that you're curious about. You worked on an image, you're not sure how, how it came out, you just want somebody else's opinion, or it, it's a picture you took you think is the greatest one you ever took and you, you want to show it to people. That's fine. Competitions a little in the latter side. You know, we're, we're not looking for you to submit something where you just want somebody's opinion. We're looking for your best work, your best recent work. So keep that in mind as you uh, look through your images and as you shoot the next couple of weeks, you have some time. It's not until July the 11th. Okay, let's turn it over to Joe. He's gonna talk about trips, past and future, and then we'll get on to the, the main show for tonight. Joe? Okay. Th thanks, Dennis. Uh, last week, we went to the Hershey Gardens, and Elaine uh, was the leader of that. You want to give us an update on the uh, trip, Elaine? Sure. Well, we didn't have to cancel it a fourth time. Um, <laughs> the rain held out. It didn't rain all day. It was a bit chilly um, and a bit breezy, so the, the breeze made it a little difficult sometimes to, um, to focus on the flowers, but uh, the cloud cover was beautiful. It just made for such soft light in the flowers, which brings out the richness of the color tones and um, eliminates the um, specular highlights. And so it was a lovely day really to photograph. We were a little disappointed that um, a few more people didn't show up. Apparently everybody thought the, it was gonna be a bit too cold, but um, we had a good time. Okay, and we had a special treat, didn't we, with uh, John with his uh, four by five view camera. That was so cool. He he showed us. He took us through the whole thing and setting it up and looking with you know the hood you put over your head so you see the ground glass in the back, and of course it's upside down and it's backwards, and so you do your composition that way, and all the turns and the twists he had on that camera. It was absolutely fascinating. And that was really a lot of fun. So, did you go that into the butterfly house? Education. Yeah. Did you go into the butterfly house? Um, did you go in, Elaine? I did, and um, I was getting a little claustrophobic within five minutes. It was oh. very crowded. Um, for future purposes, I recommend if you go on a weekend that you go into the butterfly house right at nine o'clock as soon as they open before the crowds get there um, because it, it was very crowded but there were some beautiful butterflies in there uh, michael who uh, runs the photography program there at the butterfly house uh greeted us and uh, was gonna take us ask us to come in because he would have uh, shown us and some new butterflies he would put out mm -hmm. and uh, they're very um very docile at that point and so he thought it'd be good for pictures but we didn't we didn't get into that so well, thank you, Elaine. And we have another trip. We have a trip coming up real soon on July 9th, Mr. Mike. Mike, are you here? Can you give us an update on, uh, no, that, uh, yeah, uh, an update on uh, Lily Ponds? Yeah, um, and you're correct. That'll be July, <clears throat> excuse me, July 9th. Uh, Lily Ponds is a, a commercial operation. They sell lotus, they low tie, I guess it might be. They sell um, water lilies, all kinds of water plants, and they have them in, oh, there may be eight or nine or 10 ponds. So you have choices. You can walk anywhere you want. Um, there's a retail establishment there, so there'll be restrooms. Uh, they have plants in all stages. 
And she, the lady told me that July is abs it should be really, really good because the lotus will be blooming and the water lilies bloom all, all through the summer. So you'll have your choice of colors. You'll have your choice of which way you want the light to go, all kinds of things. Now, um, Lily Ponds is in Maryland. I'm not sure exactly. I haven't checked the mileage or anything like that, but I'm sure that'll be sent to you eventually. But it should be really good. It's, it's to do with water plants. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. Uh, the Worcester Photography Club's Trips Committee had a, a meeting on Thursday night, and we've come up with our agenda for the July, August, and early in September. And uh, in addition to Mike's um, trip to Lily Ponds uh, on July the 9th, we're going to have a two uh, trips coming up relating to waterfalls. We're going to have a, a class uh, type of a trip to Bass Pro Shop, where we will have begin novice, intermediate, and advanced uh, techniques of doing waterfalls. And then right after that, we are going to have a trip to Mill Creek uh, Waterfalls down in uh, Southern Pennsylvania. And uh, that will be hopefully an absolutely spectacular location. Mark and I are, are going to be uh, scouting that out on uh, Monday, Wednesday of this week. So we have those two things coming up. And um, let me see, we have just for some other, give you an idea what we're going to be doing. We're going to have a Messiah uh, photo adventure. And that'll be in August. We're going to have a trip to Fort Hunter with uh, Mary and Norbert. We're going to do sunflowers and we're going to do Ashcombe Greenhouse with Mary and Eve also. So we've got lots of things coming up. And if you have any suggestions at all for trips, please let us know. Just email myself or to Dennis, and uh, we will put that into the, uh, into the hopper. And if you have, and I know a number of you have suggested trips, and we, if we don't select one of your trips, it's uh, not because we didn't like your suggestion. It's because we may have already been to that type of a trip, or it may not be in our, our estimation suitable for taking a group where we can sort of be together. So, but we appreciate all the input that you have for suggested trips. Thank you very much. Joe, can I say one other thing? You may. If um, anybody wants to check Lily Ponds online, it's L-I-L-Y-P-O-N-S. It's not Lily Ponds. It's actually named after a person, Lily Ponds. L-I-L-Y-P-O-N-S. So take a look at it online and see what you think. And I'll send the link out too then with the uh, information about the trip. It's a 90-minute uh, drive from Harrisburg. Okay, Dennis. Okay, Joe. Okay, I guess we're, we're starting now, huh? Yeah, yeah, we'll let you lead things off. You can explain the uh, approach that we're gonna take tonight. You, you may remember everybody that about a month or so ago, we had a, um, a live image processing. And when we did that, we kind of goofed up how we handled it. And that was not kind of, we did. <laughs> we we kind of had a free for all where everybody was giving input and it was conflicting and we were all over the place. And so, and it wasn't very instructive or educational in, in some ways. Some ways it was because we could see that there's no right way to do it, but it also was kind of confusing. So what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna finish up those that we did not finish with the last time. And I think we have four, eight, five, we have 11 images and we will go through them by the person that submitted them until we finish up to around 8, 8, 15. We're not gonna try and, and, and rush through them to get through all uh, 11 that we have. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take an image and I'm going to go through my workflow as to how I approach an image and then we're gonna process it. And then Dennis is going to take an image and he's gonna go through his workflow. These first two will take a little bit more time because we're gonna be explaining what we're doing and how we're doing it as we go along. So I am going to start and we will um, take questions as we go along. 
for sure. Let me minimize some of this stuff here. And these are the images that we're going to be um, working on uh, tonight. And we're going to start off, I am, with this one here. And the, ooh, let me, let me, ooh, wait a minute, I shouldn't have done that. Okay. This is the image that was submitted by uh, Cindy Jackson. And um, so I'm going to talk to you about what I do when I get an image, if I have one like this, and I'm going to process it. The first thing I do is I look over here. And, you know, I'm really not looking at the histogram. I'm looking at these numbers right here. Can everybody see my cursor moving? Yes. Okay. Uh, for instance, I see ISO 100, blah, blah, blah. The reason I look at this, because if I see we have a lot of dark shadows in here, and I say to myself, if, if it's an ISO 100, I probably have a really good chance of being able to recover the shadow detail. If it was an image that was like maybe 12,800 or 6,800, I would say, hmm, I'm going to have a problem doing that. And what that means to me is if I have a problem doing it, I'm going to bring out at, at an ISO of like, like say 12,000 or 6,800 with this amount of shadow detail I have, I'm going to have a lot of noise. And so that tells me I'm probably going to have to do some noise reduction and maybe some heavy duty if I had that. We don't have that in this image because it's an ISO of 100. And I look at that on my images. I look at the f-stop and the, and the millimeter. So she took this with a 16 millimeter lens at f11. And that says to me that I have lots of depth of field and this image uh, is, and that's, there's not gonna be any issue where anything close to, the, to, me, to me, to the frame, like if there were rocks in here, then they may be out of focus, but at F11 um, and a 16 millimeters, she's good to go. There's no issue there. So I'm not gonna have to do any uh, real major sharpening. I then look at the, the shutter speed and I see that six seconds. So that says to me that from my images, if I had a six second shot, I have to be very careful to make sure I don't have any motion blur in it and that I have my tripod nice and steady. And so that would say to me, I may have some motion blur, which may dictate that I had to do some sharpening. But I look at those three things and I do them real, real quick. I would go ISO 100, okay, no problem. Uh, F11, 16, this shot, no problem. Six seconds, I'll take a look and see if I have any um, motion blur. And if I do, I have to do some, um, uh, maybe do some uh, sharpening. But before I get into that, Cindy, are you here with us tonight? Dennis, do you know if she's here? No, my panel disappeared. Uh, I am here. Sorry, oh, to be while it's on my no problem. Okay. Cindy, no. uh, tell yes. us about the image, where you took it, um, and what what your feelings were about it, and kind of why you submitted it. Um, so I was in Yosemite for a workshop, and um, my goal with this was to try and smooth out the water so I could bring out some of the reflections and... I submitted it because it it's obviously needs a lot of work. Um, you know, I um, with my neutral density filter, you can kind of see it chop up the edges, and then you know, it, in order to get it not blown out in the back, it had to be very dark around the sides. So I was just curious to see what you guys could do with that. Okay, okay. So um, we're going to take that image and we're going to try and um, make it look something like that. Okay, and um, so we're, the first thing we would do is, like I said, we would look to see what kind of things we may have to technically deal with. And, and from an, we don't really have any issues here because she has a, a decent exposure, and uh, we will have to deal with the um, we we'll have to deal with the uh, shadows. So I look at the bottom uh, here. Then the next thing I do is I go and I click auto. Okay. I, this is Adobe's sit, thoughts on how we might want to process this image with the auto. I do this a lot with my images. If nothing else, 
to just give me a second uh, opinion as to, or another uh, set of eyes and how I might process it. You'll notice like right in here, when I do that and I click auto, that really didn't change very much. It only dealt with what was in the shadow areas. And I do that. And many times what I'll do is I'll turn it back off again, but I use that just to give me sort of a guideline, okay? And with those two things in mind, I say, okay, I do those very, very quickly. And I say, is this image to me, is, if it was my image, I say to myself, is this really worthwhile? Do I wanna spend any time on it or not, okay? I'm looking at the composition. Okay. Do I have, you know, anchor points on the side? And I got these two mountains. Great. I got a really good anchor point. I have a leading line into the image for sure. And that's really, really nice. I have a definite subject in here. So in my mind, I look at that and I say that absolutely, this is going to be a drop dead gorgeous image and I'm going to process it. So I make that decision and then uh, I'll process it, or, or I usually will give it a, a, a two in my Lightroom catalog, which means I'm going to go back and, and look at it later, okay? Um, and I don't process them right away. I go through and I call them all out because I may have another shot, maybe 10 or 15 down the line that may be even better than this one, okay? So I don't want to spend time on this until I look at all of the images, okay? So on this one here, if I'm going, if I'm, when I go to process it, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a virtual copy and I've already done that. So I would make a virtual copy. I would do that right in here. Okay. And what that does is that gives me a baseline of uh, the image that I'm going to be working on. Oh, excuse me. Let me move that. Uh, that gives me a baseline. This is the, the image that um, I have and, and I can uh, I have a copy of it, so to speak. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to crop it because we have that ND filter goes about right to there and about right to there. And so we cropped it. Now I'm going to see, I see that I did a little bit too much over here. So I'm just going to bring it in a touch more. And for my purposes, and I would say I'm done, I see this down here and I think we have a little bit too much water in my mind. So I might just bring this up a little bit like this just to make sure I capture all of those beautiful reflections from here. And that would almost be a one by one kind of a, and this is truly personal taste as to whether you would do it in a, a four by six or a one by one or whatever format that you may wanna crop it to. I happen to crop it to this one for, for my purposes. So I look at the image and I say, okay, was there any little, little problems I may need to deal with? And one of them that I may need to deal with is right up in here. And I'm gonna take this to 300%. And I'm gonna see that there's what we call chromatic aberration. You can see here that there's like a little halo around these branches. Whenever you have a dark item like this, branches or trees against a bright background, you have a propensity to get the um, uh, chromatic aberration and that's easily removed. If I come down here to lens corrections and I say remove chromatic aberration, I want you to look like right in here, right where my, my hand is and look at it. See how it's going away? I'm gonna flip it on and off. I have to do that slowly because it may not get to your screen yet. But if you look right in here too, I'm removing it. And on this image, that's not real critical to do because it. I'm at 300%, okay? And no one's ever gonna look at it that close, but I know that that's a potential problem and I just like to take care of it, okay? And, and I do that. The other thing I'm, I will do is I'll see if I can enable a profile correction. And if I do that, you're gonna see that there's no lens profile correction because uh, these were JPEGs that came over. It could, and it, the excess data metadata was not transmitted. And so we were unable to locate a matching profile. 
if um, Cindy, what kind of a camera did you use on this? Was it a mirrorless or a DSLR? DSLR. A DSLR. Okay. Yeah. If, if it was a mirrorless camera, it would have come in and said uh, profile already applied. Okay. And um, so you, if you wanted to put a profile, if you wanted to do that, you could go down and narrow it down. If it was a Canon and which lens you used or a Nikon or whatever, you could do that. But it's not that critical uh, in my mind to do it. Uh, but that's, if I do, I will click that. And particularly on a wide angle shot like this, um, I will often will do that. So that'd be the second uh, thing that I would do. And as I go through here, if you have any questions at all or comments, please let me know, okay? And we can, we can discuss them. The next thing I do is I would go to the basic panel and I would see what this might look like in black and white. Hmm, no, it doesn't look too good. I don't care for that, that's me now, okay? So what I might do is look at the profiles and I'm gonna come down here and go through some of my profiles and see. And I, if I like that, if I'm inclined to do that, this would be my first step in terms of black and white. But on this particular image, I think the color that we have back in here and the detail of that is just drop dead. I mean, I just love that. It's gorgeous, okay? Um, I might also take, and since that sky is a not too exciting, I might bring down my um, uh, crop a little bit to get rid of some of those errant branches that I had on the top. So once I've done that, then I say to myself, okay, what's the subject? What do I want to do here? I want to get some depth into the image. We have a lot of depth right in here. We have this in the foreground, but in here, I might want to do something to this. I, I mean, I could revert back and just have it be um, the, the, the uh, underexposed, but that isn't what we want to do, I don't think. I'm sure you were thinking maybe, Cindy, we could somehow brighten this up and bring some detail out of that. Am I right on that? Yep. Okay. So what I would do is I would take the, uh, I'm a real big on adjustment brushes, okay? I use these a lot. And I would take an adjustment brush and I would set my flow really, really low. I would turn the auto mask off. And in this particular case, I'm gonna warm up my brush and I'm going to get a little bit smaller brush here. And I'm going to lighten up these trees or these bushes in here, right in here. And my flow is so low, it's gonna take me a long time to get some detail in there. And I may just give it a little bit of a boost right here to get some detail in it. And I'm gonna do that over in here too, okay? And there's some of us, so I might do that. I'm doing it kind of sloppy here, but, but I'm gonna do that. Then I would take and I would create another brush. This is what I would do. And believe me now, we're into the area where uh, there's so many different folks who have a different vision for what they want to do here and they would process it totally different. So this is just one person's um, uh, look. I am going to increase my warmth in here and I'm going to maybe just take the shadows up a little bit and maybe like a little bit warmer. And I'm going to highlight what I consider to be things that are already light. Like these are light. There's a little bit of light right in here. I'm gonna enhance that. I'm gonna enhance this a little bit over in here and in here. But I have to be very cognizant that I think that the light is coming from over in here and hitting I think. Am I right on that, Cindy? Um, at that point, it was kind of late. Um, but I, yeah, I think I think the way the shadows are, that's the way it was coming. Okay. So I'm going to um, do that, lighten up some of these. I'm going to come over here and add a little bit of detail into these trees in here. To, and you notice I'm using a very, very low flow so that 
I can uh, build up what I want. I'm now going to add a little bit of clarity to that, and that should give it a little bit of pump. A little bit it does. Okay? So I would do something like that. Okay. Then I would say, okay, she spent a, you did a really good job on, the, on that water. You got it down for six seconds. Now I see why you did that. Um, and you wanted to get that flow because you could see, and many times you actually can't see this when you're photographing, but it comes out later, you got this S curve right in here. And maybe there's something we can do to accentuate that. So what I would do is I would create a new brush myself and I would take the highlights down and I'm gonna speed this up here by um, putting a, a little bit more flow in it. And I might take some of the highlights down a little bit here and I'm gonna bring them up later, but I'm gonna take them down because they were, they were really bright to me and, and they were um, conflicting with my view of, of that part of the mountain. So I'm gonna take these down just a little bit. Then I'm gonna create another brush and I am going to increase the, I'm gonna take the highlights up. I'm gonna take the clarity up and I might take my flow up to speed it up. And I'm gonna try, whoa, 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 that didn't work. Okay, let me just take that down. Okay, I'm going to, Take my highlights up a little bit and my temp a little bit and see. Oh my God, I've got a great new brush. Okay, my temp, my highlights a little bit. And let me just make this even a little bit. And this time I'm going to show the overlay so I can see where I'm putting this down. Okay, I think that's too much. Let me just take that highlight a little bit. And I'm bringing it up a little. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm bringing up this a little bit to try and give me a little bit of a line coming into it. Okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna turn that off now. And I'm going to add that little bit of a clarity to it and do something like that, trying to enhance it coming in. Um, the line coming in to create that S curve coming into here. The next thing I would do is I would go to 100%. Now, no, I won't do that. I've changed my mind. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to create a new mask and I'm going to select the sky. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken that sky just a little, little bit. And you can see I have the overlay on and off. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off. And I'm going to take the exposure down just a touch, just a touch. And that's not gonna work, right? I'm gonna take the highlights down to that and that would work better. I'm just gonna to touch, just a touch of that, okay? I wouldn't replace the sky because obviously we have these gorgeous clouds. So I would do that. Then I would create another brush and I would come in at 100% and I would keep my flow down pretty good and I would bring some clarity in and I'm going to brush right in here. It's gonna give me some clarity. I'm bringing out some detail. You can see that happening here in these hills and by just bringing a little bit of clarity into it and i see i have a little bit of a highlight right in here that i can take down a little bit and i'm going to do that right there and now i have this little bit of a sharpness in it but it's really not sharpness as it is it's a little bit of micro contrast is what i'm doing with the clarity slider okay and I would say that I'm done with that. And, and now I have, in my mind, I have a really, really good shot. Question, I would say is, okay, Joe, what would, you, would you take these out? Well, you could, and that's up to you to decide. You could take them out and that'd be pretty easy to do. 
and you take out the whole branch like right up in here and do that. You could take that out. But I, I personally, I, I like that. And that's kind of like something I might do to the image. And now that I've done that, I may now come back to my black and white and see, do I like this better now that I've done some dodging and burning and some work on it? Do I like that better? I don't know, I still like the color. That's kind of what I would do to an image like this. Um, if I was taking the image myself, I would have done an exposure bracket for the highlights and for the details. I would have taken two shots and then combined them and did an HDR. But if you do one shot like this at an ISO 100, um, you know you you can make you can make good things happen, which I think we've done on this. Anybody have questions? Joe, can you show a comparison side by side? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Let me, um, and let's see here, here. Oh, what happened? What did I do? Did I lose it? I'm gonna go back to library. Where did I go? Where did my image go? <laughs> Holy cow. Did I delete it? Let me just uh, Hmm. So just do um, Command Z or Control Z, whatever you're on. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Okay. And make another virtual copy, and I will reset that. There. Now, does anybody have any suggestions or thoughts that we might do differently? I think it looks great. That really brought out the color and the clouds and the reflection in the water. Did you do anything in particular to, to enhance that color or just in the darkening process? In the darkening process. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it, and it would normally be darker too. That's, you know, I have to tell you, Cindy, this is, if I had this image, I think I would print it and put it in my wall. <laughs> I really <laughs> love this image. It is gorgeous. At, when I oh, first saw you. this, I was like, oh my God, I love it, love it, love it. So. Yeah, no, it was very helpful to see how you did that. Thank you. Hey, Joe, yeah. I, I, I got my, uh, myself unmuted here a bit late. But you said, is there any suggestions that you might? I'm just wondering what would happen if you tweak up the vibrance just a little to get more of that uh, beautiful orangey uh, contrast with the blue sky. Yeah, and that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just see what happens if you uh, uh, do do the vibrance, not the clarity, the vibrance. The vibrance. No, no, the vibrance, not the clarity. Okay, uh, actually, now that I did the vibrance, I mean the clarity, I think I would do the clarity on just this part and not the water. Uh, I kind of like what it's doing to the to their to the midtone contrast into the into the body of the mountains, but I wouldn't fly to the water, but I will do the vibrance and bring that up a little bit. Um, that's see that's doing an overall and I, I don't like what it's doing to the sky, you know, I. Uh, I generally don't do that for the reason that it, I like to use very selective adjustments using the adjustment brush. Um, but, but I do like, I do like, and George, I am going to do this. I'm gonna bring up that clarity and I'm gonna give me a nice big brush cause I'm gonna spend the time, but I might do some of that in here and and then bring it down. I kind of like that. Okay. So the, um, yeah. any other comments or suggestions or? Joe Ritzkar, can I ask you a basic question, a naive question perhaps, is that do you always create a virtual copy to work on? Uh, not always. Um, when, do you, when do you decide that? 
I, I, I will decide that if I'm going to try different things and um, I, I don't want to mess up what I've already done, that'll make a virtual. I may have three or four virtual copies if I'm trying different things, just like this here on the clarity that I did. Um, I might make a virtual copy before I did that as an example. Good. Okay. Thank you. Or I might make them black and white. If I do that, I always make a black and white via virtual copy. So, Joe, I'm, I'm not a Lightroom user. So my question comes from novice land. Um, once you have your mask layers made, then I'm presuming you can go like to mask three and readjust to your heart's content. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can do that with any, any brush right. or any mask. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And, and with the new versions that came out of the masking tools, you can mask things. And then in addition to that mask, and I'll show that later on, you can just do the luminosity or just a specific color and select it out of a big old forest, and just get the little greens and, and do it. So it's really, really, it's a very, very powerful tool that they have. Okay. So that's the first one. That was mine, Dennis. Um, I am going to stop share. Okay. And you can bring yours up. All right. As I find the, I move my pen. While he's around. doing that, while he's doing that, you're going to see that I generally do not work with, on the uh, on the uh, histogram and set my black point and white point. I don't do that. Some people do do that, and I don't. Um, and I generally don't look at the histogram. I, I just don't pay a bit of attention to it, frankly. I look mm -hmm. at the image and see what it's doing to me, for me, rather. OK, this is uh, Mark Albano's image. So let's have Mark uh, talk to us a bit about it. Um, not much to say. I was kind of walking through the woods <laughs> out, out near uh, Penn's Creek and Poe Patty area and uh, happened to see this and I took the picture and then I got home and I was like it's interesting but I'm not sure what to do with it other than put a caterpillar on it smoking a water pipe <laughs> <laughs> okay if people aren't sure can you explain what it is it's a mushroom okay okay it's in the middle of the woods and, like, and it also, it needs some compositional work because I, I did shoot it right dead center. Okay, very good. That's a good starting point. And what I typically do is stare at the image for a couple of minutes. And I just see, well, what the mushroom, of course, is the center of attention. Uh, so we want to emphasize that. I look at any possible distractions. Uh, it is a relatively busy image with a lot of, you know, vegetation going in different directions around of the mushroom. Uh, there are a couple things I, that I look at here. I see this little twig is a little bit distracting to me and possibly this one, maybe that one. So I might consider removing those at some point. But one of the first things I typically do is crop. And, and the reason I do that is because that, of course, changes the composition and that will change what I might have to do or not do to the image. So if I crop out one of the items that I saw as a potential distraction, so be it, then I don't have to worry about it. I, I, I got rid of it by cropping it out. Uh, but it also gives me a view of uh, a more, a better view of the final image. And I don't crop to any particular aspect ratio normally, unless I have a need because I'm going to print at a specific size perhaps. But for the most part, if I'm posting on Facebook or just for my own purposes, I just crop to the uh, uh, desired composition. So I'll go to the crop tool. That'd be my first step here. Uh, leave the little lock unlocked so that I can change the proportions, change the aspect ratio to anything I want. Uh, let me see it. As Mark said, he shot it dead center. So we'll, we'll take it off center a little bit. And what I'm looking at are, see the way these leaves point in toward the mushroom? This one, this one and sort of up here, this comes in. So I'm saying, oh, they kind of direct your attention toward the mushroom. So let's kind of take advantage of that. Let's uh, bring the top down a little bit, maybe bring the bottom up a little, but not much. 
I had my uh, dark highlights uh, displaying there, so I turned that off. Uh, don't they turn blue? Let's bring it in here this way a little bit. So I still maintain. I like these leaves and stems coming in this way. You've got this one coming in here, this one coming in here, and that would give us pretty close to you know the rule of thirds if you believe in that sort of thing. But more importantly, it puts it off center. So let's see what that would look like. Yeah. And, and it also gives the mushroom an elevated position in the frame. So it, it, it looks more important as compared to being low in the frame. Uh, I'm looking at, the, at what's on the mushroom and its growth and some other stuff, I guess, just that's just natural. To me, it's not overly appealing, but that's the way the mushroom is. So I, I don't think I'm gonna get involved with making changes here unless I would get rid of like this black stuff, but let's not worry about that at this point. Uh, so let's, let's talk about distractions. I do find this one somewhat distracting. So let, without going, normally I'd go into Photoshop because I, it's a better, there's a better tool there for removing distractions. But in, in this case, let's just try the spot removal tool and uh, see how good a job it does. So I just click and drag it across there and see if that, boom. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Now, I don't typically make a virtual copy, but what I do instead is just tap the backslash key. It's located right below the backspace key. That's the one that goes like that, right in the upper right-hand corner of your keyboard. And I just do that and hold it down, and that takes the image back to its original state. So that's the way it looked before I did any, well, after I cropped it. But you can see the twig in the upper right hand corner. And then I leave up and it shows the changes that I've made. So I took that distraction out. And maybe this one, let's see what if it does a good job with that one. Yeah. Okay. And I think just this one down to the leaf, just, and that's rough. If I wanted to be more precise, well, maybe this one too, just make it a little smaller. I could zoom in to the leaf in between the leaves. If I wanted to be more specific and careful, I'd, I'd go to Photoshop. But yeah, yeah, that cleaned it up a little bit. This is kind of busy in here, but I'm not going to get involved with that. That's too much to deal with. Okay, so we've got our basic composition. And uh, overall, it looks a little dark to me. Let's close that tool. And that's confirmed by looking at the histogram as it's mostly to the left-hand side. But more importantly, if I look to where the histogram ends up here on the right. See, it, it doesn't go clear to the right-hand side. So that's confirming to me that nothing in this image is white, white, okay? That this whole image could be brighter without any risk of overexposing the brightest parts. And the brightest parts apparently are in here. That looks to be the, the whitest, the brightest. So let's, let's bring the exposure up a little bit. And as I do, you'll, you can see the histogram change it moves, of course, to the right and uh, brightens everything up a little bit. And I don't want to go much further than that because you can see there, there aren't many pixels that are white, but they are now up against or to the right-hand edge right here. Okay. If I go much further, let's take it maybe it's a, I've already increased the exposure by over a stop. If I take it any further, you see now the histogram, you know, the rock starts to, or the mushroom starts to, to blow out. And uh, it, you can't tell that from the histogram, but just by looking at it, you can see it's overexposed. So let's take it down to about one or so, maybe even a little bit less, something like that. And uh, if you're curious at this point, I might be curious about, well, what's it gonna look like in black and white? I'll just click on black and white and say, yeah, I don't like that. So I'm gonna stick in color just in case. Uh, a lot, of, I, I had never got into the habit really of doing much with profiles. But from watching the videos on YouTube, a lot of photographers who use Lightroom do. So they would go into the profile panel here and they would maybe browse the different options. Now they're limited here because, you know, as Joe mentioned, we're dealing with uh, JPEG files, not the original raw files. There would be more options, you know, if we uh, had the original raw files. But in any case, I'm just going to stick with the, the basic color and I'll move the sliders around and see how we might improve it that way. Uh, at this point, I might be curious about the 
white balance. And, and I say just curious because I'm wondering what it would look like with the white balance changed. It doesn't look bad now. It looks kind of looks pretty natural. But just out of curiosity, let's go to the left to the blue side with the temperature and see what it does to the image. Nothing good. Let's mm -hmm. go the other way and warm it up a little bit. See what happens there. It may be a little warmer light. Ooh, OK, I think I like that a little bit. Not too much. I pass the it's in shade here a little bit, I think. And then as I warm it up, it's more like daylight. And then it gets a little too much. So let's just, I'm just going to warm it up and it's just to taste a little bit because I think in the shade of the trees, you're getting a, a, a bluish tint, I think a little bit to, to the uh, overall scene. Now you can check that if you want by bringing your cursor over to something that looks white or neutral. Okay. And I would say that this stuff looks, you know, like it should be white or, or it's pretty much white. If, if it is, well, the closer you have the RGB values to being equal, you know, then the closer you are to a neutral tone. And if you look under the histogram over here, the RGB values, okay, you can see it's 78, 78, 76. Wow, they're almost exactly equal. So yes, this is a neutral tone. It's some shade of white or gray. And because it's up in the 70s, the high 70s, it's more on the white side. If it would be like 20, 20, 20, it would be neutral, but they'd all be very dark. If it would be 90, 90, 90, yeah, that'd be neutral too, but it would be nearly white, okay? So I just played around. I just moved the temperature back and forth uh, and I sort of like it a little bit warmer. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Now, as I said, I already changed the exposure. The one thing you have to, to be aware of is that the white balance, overall white balance, and the exposure are linked together. They affect one another. So if I would have left it dark and changed the white balance and warmed it up and then changed the exposure, I very likely would have to go back and change the white balance again because changing the exposure affects the white balance. Okay, the color temperature. All right. Now, uh, Sometimes, like, like Joe hit the auto button. Yeah, I do that sometimes just to see what, you know, Lightroom's going to suggest. But just as often, I don't. I just go ahead with, with what I usually do. On, I would say, 90% of my images, unless it's really an unusual image, I'm always going to lower the highlights somewhat. I'm almost always going to raise the shadows, almost always. Now, here's where I get into the white and black points, and, and I do this on almost every image uh, because I, I like to sh prove to myself that there's a good tonal range in the image, that if, if the image looks like it should have a good tonal range, that something in this image should be almost black and something should be almost white. Well, this, here's how you prove it to yourself. Hold down the Alt key, and I like to do the blacks first, but yeah, the move the black slider. As soon as you hold down the Alt key and you click on the black butt slider, it goes completely white. As you move it to the left, now what starts to show up is what is actually black in the image, okay? So, you know, that would, yeah, it's way too far, but let's just start getting things dark. And I'm gonna take my finger off the, the Alt button and look at it and see, Okay, it was minus five. It's a little bit dark. Yeah, there's some stuff in there that's pretty dark. If I go too far, see, it just muddies it up and it just gets way too dark in the shadows. So I'm going to have it in like a little bit minus, you know, maybe 10, 11. Okay, and I just check here, see how much of that is, is actually black. Eh, it's a little much. Now, it doesn't bother me to have area, depending on the image, have areas that are totally black. You know, somebody might say, well, if, you don't want parts of your image that are totally underexposed. Eh, I definitely don't want in parts of my image that are totally overexposed, but underexposed doesn't bother me so much. If it's a dark moody image, you know, black is fine for me. So I would leave it there and I'd go to the whites, do the same thing, but now it's just the opposite. Hold down the alt key, 
click on the slider and everything turns black. And as you move the slider to the right, as soon as something starts, oh, something's starting to turn white right there, that means it's gonna be overexposed. So now I back off to just to the point where it's not overexposed, boom, okay? And that is this area right in here, okay? So it is pretty close to being white. Let's check. Let's go up here, put the cursor over top, and it's like 84, 85, 87. If it were 100, it would be completely white, okay? Now, I don't need to make it completely white, but it, it's bright enough. Let's see what happens if I bring it up a little bit from 23. Let's bring the whites up a little bit more. See, then it starts to get obnoxious. So I'm going to leave it about yeah, 30 or so. Let's check again. Check the RBV value, RBV, RBG values, RGB values, 78, 77, 76. Yeah, okay. It's nowhere near overexposed, but it's bright enough. So I have a good tonal range throughout the image. I have things that are dark and things that are, are bright. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty much where I would leave that uh, in terms of tech. And I, I, this is my workflow. I pretty much just go down the line. Uh, and I may jump back and forth a little bit at times, but I come down to texture and I say, well, does this image need, does it have a lot of texture in the image? Well, it sure does. Look at this stuff, this vegetation and even the mushroom. So I'm going to enhance that a bit. Let's watch what happens. Can't really see much. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's watch, let's uh, look at the, let's take it back, click, click, take it back to zero. And I jump, bump it up a little bit. Yeah, it, can, yeah, it, it enhances that texture a little bit. And uh, I'd also increase the clarity a little bit, which is the mid-tone contrast, as Joe said. So let's jump that up a little bit. And yeah, you can see something's happening there. Let's go back, let's show the whole image. Click, click back to zero and bring the clarity up a little bit again. Yeah, it gives it a little, Oomph. Okay, little little definition brings it in there. Okay, uh, do I want to do anything with the vibrance? So let's check. Let's uh, follow George's suggestion. Let's juice it up a little bit. See if that makes much of a difference. I think greens get a little bit greener. So yeah, I can handle that. And and typically in Lightroom, uh, you avoid changing the saturation. Instead, use the vibrance because saturation changes all of the colors equally, which is not necessarily a good thing, not usually a good thing. Vibrance brings up the colors that aren't already saturated or nearly saturated and doesn't saturate the ones so much that are already intense. Uh, it's especially good if uh, you have people, faces, skin tones, it doesn't blow out the skin tones then and make them too orangish red. So I leave the saturation at zero, bring the vibrance up, boost it just a little bit. And, and somebody might say, well, how far do you take it? Eh, you know, if you go like here and you go like, oh, let's go up to 50 feet. No, no you don't need to go up that far. It's, it, it's a matter of taste. So I typically go too far, the other, and then too far the other way, back, 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 until I get to a middle point and say, eh, yeah, that's where I like it. So I'm just going to boost it up just a little bit. And again, now let's check on progress. So let's hold down the backslash button. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I'd say that's an improvement. We're, we're getting there. Tone curve, I don't mess with often in, in uh, Lightroom. Just don't, don't use it. A lot of people do. They say it's very worthwhile. I don't see any need to in, you know, manipulate individual colors. So we'll skip over the HSL panel color grading I'm not going to do. Ooh, ooh, detail. Don't skip the detail panel, okay? This is where you do sharpening and noise reduction. Well, am I going to need sharp? Yeah, I'm going to need sharpening, especially if you're working with the original raw file. The JPEG has probably already been sharpened. If it was shot as a JPEG, the camera sharpened it. If it was processed and, and converted to a JPEG from raw, then the sharpening was probably done during the, the uh, exporting process, the conversion. Uh, do we need to do a noise reduction? Well, probably. I'm going to hit the I key because I want to see uh, the ISO. Hit it twice. And you can see here, uh, Joe looked at the histogram up here, which you could do too. Here, up here it is. Uh, 
Let's, we'll just turn that off and use the histogram. One two hundredth of a second was the shutter speed, aperture is f8, uh, 49 is the, the focal length of the lens, and 800. So it depends on your camera, but you know, if you're at 800 ISO, almost any image would need a little or should have a little noise reduction, okay? At least the luminance, not necessarily the, you know, the color, uh, but we'll, we'll, let's see. I'm zooming in here to see if I see any, if I, oh, let's look, let's look in an area here. Uh, just, you see the, the, the noise, a little bit of noise in there. Let me take it up the whole way and see what happens. See how it goes soft? Well, that's way too far, but you do get an effect, okay, when you apply noise reduction. So sharpening, this is a very interesting combination, sharpening and noise reduction. The more you reduce the noise, the softer your image gets. So you want to be very careful and don't apply any more luminous noise reduction than you think you really need. Uh, so let's apply a little bit. Let's take it up to 20 just as a you know, starter here. And uh, let's do some sharpening. Now, the problem we're going to run into here is this is a JPEG. So as I said, it's probably already been sharpened. So watch what happens when you sharpen too much. Ooh, see all that stuff, all those artifacts? Yeah. That's over sharpening. And when you, when you enter an image in, in, in review or competition, you know, Mike uh, Donovan and, or Bryson Leidick are gonna look at your image and if they see this kind of stuff, they're gonna say, hey, you over sharpened it. So we certainly don't wanna do that, but we do wanna add some sharpening to it uh, just to general purposes. There are some photographers like uh, Serge Romelli who have this rule of thumb and they say the sharpening amount plus the luminance noise reduction should equal 100. They like that. So if they have luminance at 20, they put the sharpening at, at 80. So the, the combination of the two equal 100. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing to do. I just know that you don't want to use any more luminance noise reduction than you think you really need because it softens the image. And you definitely want to sharpen the image, but you don't want to over sharpen it. Now, here's the other little important caveat about sharpening. Masking, masking. You don't want to sharpen the whole image uniformly, especially if you have an area like the sky, like the image Joe was doing of Cindy's. Yeah, no, 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 don't want to do that. So you go to masking and you hold down the Alt key again, and slide, you know, I click on masking, you see it's all white. That tells you whatever sharpening I applied is being applied to the entire image. You don't want that. Where do we want our sharpening applied? Oh, mostly the edges. So watch this, hold down the Alt key, click on masking, slide it over and watch what happens. Look, I'm seeing just the edges. Ah, so that's what I want, something like that. Just give it some crispness by defining those edges more sharply. All right, how are we doing? Let's check the backslash key. Uh, yeah, I'd say that's an improved image. Okay, so let's continue on here. What else would I do? Uh, nothing else down there. We get to the lens correction and Joe mentioned this. I make sure that this is always checked for me. It's either going to do nothing or it's going to do something good. <laughs> it never does bad things to your to your photo. <laughs> so leave it on. And as Joe said, also with the profile, yes, I would enable that. But in this case, it's not going to do anything because we're working with a JPEG image that doesn't have that in, in the profile. Okay. But with a raw file, yeah, uh, you, you, Lightroom has the characteristics of almost every lens in there. And uh, a correction for the distortion in any particular lens. So it, it's good to do that. And usually it comes up automatically because that data is in the XS, XF metadata. All right, so yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. Transform, we don't need to use. Uh, effects, well, we didn't apply any vignetting. Uh, usually I'll apply a slight negative vignette, like night, minus 18. And well, what's it look like? Well, let's here turn it on and off. On, off, on, oh, 
See the corners? Just in the corners. Darken, lighten. Darken. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It, it just has the subtle effect. I can't really see it. I can't tell it's applied in the image. That's good. It's good. But it has the subtle unconscious effect of bringing your eye right into that mushroom which we didn't even have to brighten the mushroom. It's naturally brighter. If it would have been much darker, then I would have used a, a tool here, a masking tool, radio masking tool, uh, to select it and brighten it. But what we could do, just for the fun uh, of it, is we could use that radio tool, pick it right there, bring it out, define the mushroom, okay? And you can see where it's defining it there. And now what I might do is sharp, give the mushroom added texture and clarity and what else? Uh, oh, sharpening. Sharpening, where's sharpening? Here, sharpen a little, 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 just add a little bit more. And that will tend to give the mushroom a little more punch. Now, don't overdo it. It'll, it'll be too much. But it just, again, uh, <coughs> brings it out, bring, highlights the subject of your picture a little bit more. Brings, you know, it stands right out from everything else. Uh, what else do we have down here? Calibration, no, there's no need to mess with the calibration. And, and you'll notice a little trick in Lightroom here, you know, if you're not aware of this, when I open one panel, the other one closes so that only one's open at a time and uh, it simplifies things. So what you can do is put your cursor in the middle of the header there and right click and hit solo mode, solo mode. So only, only the one you open is open at a time. Okay, so again, let's hit a backslash key. <coughs> Pardon me. Boom. I think that's, uh, I, I would call that a finished image. Questions or comments? Yeah, Dennis, Rich Scar again. Um, this may be on the scope, but would you have lightened up the stem to that mushroom to try to identify it a little quicker for the viewer that it is a mushroom or? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's something I never thought of. Yeah, certainly, that, that is a good idea. Because you're right, I thought it, it was a little uncertain. When I zoomed in, I had a better idea. So what we could do is just uh, you know, use a, uh, create a mask, get a brush, okay, define the area, stems right there. So I should soften this up a little bit and go on it kind of quickly. There, we've defined the area, have not made any changes yet to it. But as soon as I go over here and I change the, I increase the exposure, you know, the red mask goes away and it brightens it up a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. Let me close this. Go back out of there. Oop. <coughs> yeah. yeah, I think that's a good idea, Rich, thanks. Let's look at the mushroom once. Look how oh, you get a lot of detail in the mushroom now. Yeah, and you, see, you, can, you can see from the uh, limited depth of field that as you get toward the back of the mushroom, it gets softer and, and softer. But in the front there, nice and crisp, good detail. Can you do the backslash key on the original? So okay, we can here we go, ready? Yep. And now zoom in on the mushroom there, the white part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, look yeah. at, see how soft it looks there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, brightens it up and crisps it, you know, gives it a lot of crispness, more sharpness, more texture, more clarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? A question for you. Do you have a preset set that when you import your images, you automatically do the um, uh, the corrections on the profile corrections? Yes. And you do? Yes. Okay. Yeah, during the import process, uh, I have all, well, I created uh, a a develop module preset for the very basic changes. Like I said, oh, I almost always decrease the highlights, increase the shadows, increase the whites, decrease the blacks on almost every picture. So why don't I create that as a starting point and have Lightroom just you know, make that change right at the beginning automatically. So yeah, I, I make those changes on, you know, on a sample image, save it as a preset, okay? And then during the import process, there's a place where you can have Lightroom apply that preset. And I just call it import preset. So mm -hmm. yeah, you have it have Lightroom apply that import preset to every photo. And it gives me a starting point then for every every picture that's imported. Okay. Dennis, I have a question. Yes. Um, there's there's like a, a little red um, vertical or almost vertical line. Yeah. How would you deal with that? Mm -hmm. Uh let's try. 
what I'd probably do is I'd select it and and uh, de and desaturate it. I don't know if there's anything else in. I, I was tempted to go to the HSL panel since it's red and decrease the reds, but you know what's going to happen? There are some red tones in the green stuff, right. probably, and it's yeah. going to change everything. So it's going to change the tonality of a lot so of. So you stuff. saw it too. <laughs> well, uh, not enough. That, not to be honest, not enough that it bothered me. Uh, but yeah, I see it now. So let's change that. Let's close that. Let me, let me just select that area. And then if I go down here, and I've selected it without doing anything to it. If I go down to sat, desaturate, let's see. Yeah, it takes the green out of it too, but it's less noticeable that way. Now it looks like a, one of the twigs over here. Yeah, yeah. It, it blends in the, with the image now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Hey, Dennis, I've else? got a question. I've got a question if you don't mind. No uh, when you did the noise reduction over there in the twigs, I must have a much better tolerance for noise uh, than a lot of people, but I can't imagine needing to do that because I can't imagine if this were print, even a big print, someone viewing it would say, oh my God, there's noise in those twigs. I don't think anyone would ever notice it. Ooh, well, yeah. Mike, <laughs> Donovan, you want to respond to that? I was here laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Only, only a jerk like me, George, would pick that out. If it's on the wall and you're two, two and a half feet from it. If um, what they taught at Hack was, if you can't see it at arm's length, it doesn't exist. Yeah, and and there'll be. This is such a busy image that I don't think the noise would be that noticeable. But there are other images where it, there's not as much texture and, and detail in it, where you know the noise would become more obvious. Yeah, I kind of thought you're doing it as as, as an instructive demonstration, uh, rather than dealing necessarily with that batch of twigs. Uh, no, I that I would have done that if this were my image and I were processing it. Yeah, I cause I always want to keep in my workflow noise reduction as an option. Now, even if I don't apply, apply much, I want to make sure that I'm thinking about, do I need to apply any? And in this case, I, I deemed that, yes, I should apply at least a little bit. I did, I did see some. The thing about a print is it then is permanent. Okay, any other questions or comments on, on uh, Mark's mushroom? Mark, did you uh, eat or smoke this one? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> took a header down the side of the hill after I took the picture, though. Oh, not a good idea. <laughs> okay, Joe, let's no. go back to you, and uh, you can, I'll stop. You can do your number two. Okay. Your second, your second image, I should say. <laughs> okay. I can see my screen. We're going to go to the library, and it is 8.09, so we only have time for one more image my goodness and we've only done i, I know each. we've only done two <laughs> okay um what i'm going to do let me see i'm going to take richard this one right here okay this is the image that richard um provided and so richard tell us about this why you took it and what what appealed to you and etc well, um, it, it was really the, the, the subject matter, but the kind of the message that comes through, it's obviously no smoking in the building. So it had an ironic kind of twist to it. Um, and then why I kept it too is for that, but also is because the very dark area on the left from the shadow has bothered me. And I tried some things to really lighten that up, but I lost a lot probably on my lack of experience at the time with, with Lightroom. So, yeah, so I, I, I like a little bit of the, the irony of this shot and I like the kind of a, the, the contrast here a little bit. Okay. Okay, good. Um, what I would do is I would take a look here. Like I said, I, I could either do the I key over here and see that it's uh, 1640 of a second, ISO 400. No, that's that's a low ISO. F20 
And so there's no issues here that I'd have to deal with. And the reason I'm doing this is because if you if that ISO was like maybe 1200 or let's say 6400, then I would say to myself, I need to do noise reduction. I wouldn't do it in Lightroom. I would do it in Topaz Denoise. And when you do that, you should do it on the whole image. That's their recommendation and not on a cropped image. And that's why I look at that because if I'm gonna do the Topaz Sharpen or Denoise, I'm gonna do it on the whole image and not on a cropped image. And this one I'm gonna be cropping and I'm going to be um, uh, straightening it. Okay, so I'll turn that off. Okay, first thing I would do here is I'm gonna go much quicker now because of our timeline. And I am gonna say that probably Richard doesn't care about this white thing here competing against the ashtray. So I'm gonna bring it up. And mm -hmm. Richard, I kind of like your black myself, <laughs> but, let's see, but let's just see what happens. If I try and bring that shadow up, if I try and bring up the exposure of that, let me take it into 100%. See what I got there? Yeah, that's a problem okay. I have. And I, and I got to tell you, I don't think any program is going to be able to, to deal with that, okay? I mean, I could come down here and I could go to the detail. I could take to the noise reduction and I could take the color noise out. And you can see that that's going away. You can see how right in here, let me go in into 300%. You see all that color noise? Yeah. I could take that out by doing this and that works pretty well, okay? Let me go back to 100%. And now I could try and take the noise out in there and I can, but it's still, it's gonna be crunchy, yeah. okay? So, and actually I don't think we need to, from my perspective, it was my image. I don't think I would need to do that. I think that I could leave that dark, but what happened? Exposure went way down. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't want to have a whoa. Fun. Happened. I'm glad you know. I kept the original. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I'm going to make a virtual copy. So I'm going to say, okay, create a virtual copy, Joe, just to cover my fanny. <laughs> so um, I, I, I think, right, I think this is a really nice image. Now, now this is really gonna become, what is it that, that we wanna tell as a story? And I think that telling the story of this guy and that hand coming out and just the hand, <laughs> to me, is really cool, okay? And I think it's really cool in black and white too. Ah, ah. And I also think it's cool because I use these profiles all the time I would just go through these profiles and see what it's going to do to my image and like that, okay? I think that really makes a cool image myself in black and white because the reason I say that, the color seems to get in the way. Yeah, I agree. Okay? It, it does to me. I don't know if you feel that way. Yeah, I do. Okay. So I did that one really quick. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent job. Thank you. Okay. Dennis, do you want to do one now? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to. I have one from uh, Mary Eileen. Mary Eileen, are you on board? You could uh, tell us about this image. Let's see if she is. Look at my I'll look to see, Dennis. You can bring it up. I don't think she is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me share this image. Got to find share screen. Jumps around on me. Okay, here we go. There we go. Share screen. Okay, yeah, I thought this image would be instructive. Uh, okay, looking at it, and, and you can see that it was shot with a, a wide angle, well, not so much a wide angle, 50 millimeter, but it's uh, leaning upwards. So the lines are, are leaning in. It's key, there's keystoning, <laughs> and it's very blue. So the question is do we want to keep the blueness or not? It was shot at uh, ISO 1600, so I think noise is going to be a little bit of an issue. Let's zoom in and look at it. Uh, yeah, you can you can see quite a bit of noise in there, so we're going to deal with that. <coughs> uh, might it look good in black and white? Mm, yeah, it might, might. Okay, but 
let's see. And what I would do then, I think I'd like Joe, I'd make a virtual copy and then I'd, well, I'd process it first and then make a and then make a virtual copy and change it to black and white and make minor make tweaks in the black and white version to see one which one I like best. Well, let's assume I'm going to proceed with the collar version. And I said that I like to crop first. And in this image, I, I don't see that I want to crop this necessarily, but I know if I correct the verticals, it, it's going to do, it's going to change the composition. So let's go to lens correction down here. Okay. And I typically try uh, auto. Oh, I didn't mean lens correction. I'm sorry. Transform. Sorry. Transform. I tr typically try auto first to see what it does. So click auto. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, watch what happens. See the white, the area over here? And the, look at the lines, how they, they are angled. I hit auto. Yeah, that's not bad. I think I'm going to go with that. If auto doesn't work, then I go to guided where you have to draw the lines against the, uh, the verticals. Well, let me just show you that. So go to guided. I say, well, this line's supposed to be straight up and down. So I click, drag, define it. Good enough. Here's one, let's say right along this line. It's, I want it to be straight, click, drag. Come over here. This should be straight. I click and drag along the line and say that should be straight, not, not bending like that. So boom, boom. And any horizontals? Don't see. Yep. Okay. That is looking pretty good. So I think I can accept that. Yeah, that looks pretty straight. Okay, so I'll go back to the basic panel and uh, I can play around with my, uh, like I did before, play around with my temperature just to see, ooh, no. No, I'm not gonna do much with that. And of course, if it were a raw file, I'd have more um, uh, flexibility here. I could do more with this in terms of the white balance before it would get funky. But let's just leave the white balance where it is. I, I kind of like that bluish look to it. I'm not going to try to neutralize that. And you can see in the histogram up here also that there are a lot of blues. See it's spiking there. That's okay. How about the overall exposure? Uh, not bad. Yeah, I'm getting something that's uh, burnt out. Here. Oh, I guess it's right there. It's that highlight probably that's burnt out. Let's check. I click up here in a little triangle. Oh, look, it turned red. Yep, that specular highlight is overexposed which is not a problem because you would expect a bright street light to be overexposed, not a problem. But what, what I typically do then, like I did before, go down here, decrease the highlights a bit I'm, I'm, and increase the shadows. Here's the biggie. This overall blue tone lacks contrast. So I'm thinking that we can boost the contrast a lot with the black and the white sliders. Let's try the black one. Boom, hold down the Alt key. Nothing's black, nothing's black key. Okay, just starts to get black there. Let's look, see what it looks like. Okay, down this corner, that's turning black. Let's do the whites. Uh, okay, starting to blow out there. I don't want that, so I'm gonna back off a little bit. And yeah, I've given it more punch. Let's try a little bit more, just see for, for see what, ooh, I like that. Ooh, ooh, that has more guts to it i think yeah i don't mind that this went black i like that triangle down there that's nice you know, a nice uh, graphical shape uh the whites watch what happens if i increase the whites though too much more, more ooh, ooh, there i've overdone it but now oh wow hey look at that let me hit the backslash key let's see what it looked like before blah bam oh i like that i like that so I bring down the highlights a little bit because I've got highlights over here in these windows and look at the color contrast. Isn't this nice? You got the blues in the reflected glass against the, the orangish yellows of the direct light from the, uh, the inside uh, rooms. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, texture, yeah, there's, this is a, an image that has a good bit of texture. So let me juice that up a little bit. Maybe a little more clarity too for a mid uh, range punch. Yeah, see how punchy it's getting? Let's check before, uh, flat. Oh, yeah, I like that, I like that. A little more vibrance, maybe. Just jack it up a little bit. Eh, it's getting really bluish, but that's okay. It's, it's that hour, it's the blue hour, right? So we like that. Tone curve, no, HSL, no, no. Detail, don't forget the detail. We, remember, we had uh, noise to deal with. Oh, see all that stuff? Watch this, luminance noise. Wow, there it went away completely, but look what it did. It took away all the detail. 
Okay, so I went way too far. So let's just go a little bit up there, take it back to zero until it, ooh, okay. Maintain, yeah, okay, that's looking pretty good. So you got rid of a lot of that fuzziness in there. Uh, and now let's do the sharpening. Okay, it didn't have any sharpening applied. Let's see what happens when I jack that up too far. Oh, see the crunchiness? Too far, over sharpened. Bring that back. And you really have to play this by ear. It depends on the file, on the image, on every, every particular photo is different. And if this is JPEG, so it's different from a raw file. But don't forget the masking, alt key, mask. Go, oh, well, let me, gotta see the whole thing. Masking, I just want the edges. See, that's in sharpening everything, don't want that. Let's just do the edges, boom, punch, punch. Maybe a little bit more. Look at that. Backslash key to check all oh, the original. Yes, I like that. That looks good. Okay, what else will I do? Uh, lens correction. Oh, yeah, lens correction. I should be removing chromatic aberrations. And only Remember, it's, it only does good things. Enable the profile. Nothing to enable, but I'll do it anyway. Transform, we did. Effects is just the vignetting. Do I want a vignette? I don't know. Let's try it. No, that's too far. I don't think I need a vignette with this particular. I vignette 90% of my images probably, but this one I'd say doesn't really need it, okay? Because my attention is drawn in here. You know what I might do though, just for the heck of it? One final touch, I think, is what I would do. I would lower the exposure of the entire image. The whole thing just looks a little too bright for me, but this is the attention getter. So let's pick the radial gradient. And let's just bring out this area a little bit more. Maybe increase the brightness of that area. Let's do more, a little more black, a little increase the whites a little bit. Uh, a little, just playing around here. And uh, that maybe oh, a little more clarity just to this area. Okay, that's looking pretty darn good. Maybe leave a little more sharpness just to that area. Okay, let's say backslash key. That's before. That's where we started. Boom. That's what we end up with. Questions or comments? Hey, everybody sleeping or what? Yeah, I think it's amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm overwhelmed. The people who don't process, don't post process are just missing so much, you know, taking the image is one thing. And if you do it in raw, you have so much more information to work with than a JPEG file. So you can then start playing around, whether it's in Lightroom, or whatever processing program you use, and you can just be a, a, an artist. You can create things that from the original palette, you get something spectacular. Dennis, that was brilliant. And I would have reduced the, uh, 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 the noise there where you did. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Anything else? Dennis, I have a question about yeah. the noise reduction. Yes, Elaine. I don't typically use Lightroom for noise reduction. I use Topaz. Okay. But um, occasionally it's a little bit easier just to stay in there if it's just light noise reduction. I noticed you didn't use the detail slider. When would you, if ever, use the detail slider to kind of compensate for that loss of detail as opposed to sharpening? I typically don't mess with the detail slider. I just leave it at it, at it you know, where it is. I, I just don't use it. But if you, uh, if you watch YouTube videos, you'll find some people that do, if, if they think they're, they're losing detail and you do lose detail with the noise reduction, they would pump up the detail slider a little bit. And you certainly could do that. Yeah, you know, I, I just typically don't. Maybe I may be missing out. So it might be a good thing to do. Okay, anything else? Okay, Joe, any uh, closing comments? Well, yes, it's 8, uh, 8, 8, 30, 25. So I think we're done. And um, so that's it. That's it. Okay, uh, let's see. I'll quit. Yeah, I'll quit my light room. Anybody have any uh, questions or comments before we wrap things up here? Oh, thank you to both of you. It was great. Sure, sure. Appreciate it. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. Very okay, just a reminder, no meeting next week, no meeting July 4th. The next meeting is a competition on July the 11th. There's no theme, no theme. That makes it easier for people. <clears throat> but 
find your best work. What have you done in the last few months that you really like? Take a second look at it, clean it up as much as you can, and give us your best best shot. Best shot. So we'll have that open. You can, uh, all right, Marco, if you'll take care of, of opening up the competition, we can start uploading images anytime. Uh, if anybody has any questions about entering the competition, certainly give me a call or, or shoot me an email. And uh, I'll put a follow-up email out tomorrow with a link to the recording, of course, as well as, uh, oh, I'll give you uh, the calendar of events uh, through August the 31st. That's the end of our club year. Okay, so all the, the events that we have, the trips that the committee came up with, uh, I'm doing a presentation on soap bubbles and soap films. If you've followed me on the Facebook page, uh, you know, that's been my passion lately. So I'm going to do a little presentation on how you can do uh, some of that same stuff uh, August uh, 22nd, I think. But I'll send out all those dates tomorrow with the uh, follow-up email. Okay, guys, thank you very much. It's been a lot of fun. Good night and take care. Night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super session. Yes. Right. Thank you. Curtis, are you still on? Yeah, I am now. Okay, if um, I'm going to show you something on that image that you had, I wanted okay. to.